Good afternoon, YouTubers. I'm not an expert, and this is a desk that I made about a year and a half ago. And you can see it's missing something. I've never made a drawer. So today, I made a video of making the drawer. Finally got around to it. It's a little long. You'll probably want to hit the fast forward. All right, I forgot to film the earlier steps. So here in the dovetail, in my moxin vice, I did a video on that a while ago. We've got uh, starting to do the cutouts. I'm going to have to move this camera because I'm not very good at camera. We're cleaning up. There's no place to put the camera. There we go. So now we're going to do a little cutting out of these center pieces. All right. Let's go over the other one. So these are my drawer sides. I hadn't said so earlier. And these are going to have the tails on them. If I can figure out how to work my own vise. So far, I am liking this Moxon vise quite a bit. Don't look too close. You can see how that is a really bad cut. It's way off. I'll have to fix that with a chisel. Now, luckily... The nice thing about cutting the tails, uh oh, get a little low there. Let's start it. Okay. The nice thing about cutting the tails is it's the first thing you're doing, so you can trim them. And if you've made a mistake, they might come out a little different width, might not be perfect, but. You can always remove a little more from the tail, clean them up, which once you've made the tails and your pins, you know, you don't quite have that luxury. Okay, so this wood that I'm using is some maple, and I don't know if it'll show up on the camera. Let me look over here and look. I ran this through my jointer and my planer, and it's got some tear out. I didn't really think this grain was bad. The other thing, and you can't see it on this piece. Let me grab another piece real quick. So I've got some burning. These are going to be the, the sides of the drawer. See the burning? This wood, when I was putting it through the saw, began to close on the saw. Now I have a, a riving knife in there, so it wasn't a big deal, but it really closed the gap up fast. I was really surprised. So there's a lot of tension in this wood. Uh, I don't know what that means for the future of my drawers. We'll find out when the, you know, maybe a year goes by, but, and I'm doing them half an inch thick, just, I don't know, no real reason. It's going to be a large drawer for a desk that I made a year and a half ago, and I've just never made the drawer. So anyway, let's go on to the next step. I've cut those pins to some extent. So now we're gonna clamp this thing in. This oriented where I want it. Okay, and you can see that it's clamping down the bottom and not the top. Hmm, oh well, that's the way it goes. So actually, let me move this a little bit more this way. That'll work. And I need a chisel, a fairly wide blade, and I need a, a smasher. Okay, and I'm going to make a little knife wall because that's what all the guys on the YouTubes do. Put that right in there. And I tend to make my knife walls kind of big. Some people I've seen make some really delicate ones. And I don't know what's right. So I just do it. Because not knowing is half the battle. All right, let me grab the old saw again. I'm cutting the right place here. Yeah? All 
Okay, that's not beautiful either. I cut too far. And I went into the thing. That's amazing. I'm not good at this. All right. Thank you guys for sticking with me while I fumble through these tests. I need to get that a little lower in there. But... All right, I'm going to have to move some stuff. Let's move some stuff. Maybe we'll edit this out. All right, good stuff. Okay. Let's check this, make sure it's aimed at what we're doing. Okay. Tripod's not happy. There we go. Okay. So again with the knife wall, in case I want to cut that last bit out. There it goes. A little tappy tappy. Well, this chisel could be a little sharper too. I'm gonna have to Take a break and go sharpen my chisels. It's been a little while since I've used them. And I tend to forget what state I've left them in. Okay, let's loosen that up a little bit. Tighten that one down. Mm, this is not going well. Okay, so remember, my videos are not how-to. They're just you watching me screw it up. Because <laughs> that's more fun. And really, I'm not good enough at this to tell you how to do it. I'm just doing what I've seen and, and learned. A lot of it from YouTube, some of it from books. You know, that happens. Book learning. It's not an everyday occurrence, but it does happen. In my house, and Okay, little knife wall. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Okay. Grab the right tool. Put that in there. Come around from this side. Okay, so that little knife wall you see me making gives the saw blade a little place to start. Try and lightly cut. There we go. Try not to cut into the other side too much. Of course, this is a drawer. So as you may have guessed, no one's ever really going to see it. Ah, screwed that up. There we go. Blacking these in so they're a little easier to see. That's about as long as I can get into this thing. Interesting limitations of the uh, homemade box and vice. It's not a perfect tool. Can't find that little cut from the... There we go. Sound a little better. Where's it hanging? Ah, okay, I'll clean that up. Okay, so it's going to need a little extra chisel cleanup because I am not good enough at this to have them come right out. But I want to show you something. Can you see this? Can you get in there? Can you see how good that is? So that's the, the saw that I... Is that focusing? It's never focusing when I need to. I'll move my hands around here. There we go. Wait, it was there for a second. Where's the part that focused? Okay, so that saw cut, if you look at the shoulder here, that's not so bad. Now the cross cut, not that great, but... I'm going to say that that saw that I tuned up myself following Rex Kruger and Paul Sellers instructions makes a pretty nice cut. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not bad. This is hard. Actually, I think it's soft maple. I can't remember what kind of maple it is. Maple. 
Um, it's got some tear out. It's going to need some sanding. I'll do all that before I assemble the drawer. Okay, let's uh, get set up for the next thing. Okay, so I just filmed the trimming of a bunch of these with the camera aiming at the back of my left hand. So this is not going to be the greatest video I've ever made. And I know that you people who've watched my videos are going to say, yeah, we know. It's okay. <laughs> We've seen your work. None of them are your greatest video. Okay, there's that into that little knife wall. So in case I edit out all the parts with my hands in the way, because I probably will, no promises. I should, though, because we're terrible. Um, I was talking about, this is maple. And can you see in there? You can kind of see. It has a little bit of tear out, but not a lot. And people recommend learning to dovetail on soft woods. But what I've found is that the soft woods tear out so much, it's hard to make a decent looking dovetail. It's a little discouraging. So I don't know if I recommend that. I made some dovetails. I made some uh, big trays, big serving trays for my neighbor, and I dovetailed the end. So it was a two inch wide piece of wood. And I put a single dovetail in the end of it. And red oak. And it came out really good. Uh, and I found that red oak was a lot easier to cut a dovetail in than, say, poplar. And especially than pine. Because it doesn't tear out. It chisels really nicely. And so my recommendation, if you're going to practice, is get some wood that chisels really nicely. Uh, mahogany's... Uh, Cherry chisels very nicely. Walnut chisels really nicely. You know, it cuts without tearing. And that's kind of, I think, easier to get started with than uh, using a really soft wood that's going to tear and be difficult to make uh, good-looking joints with. I don't need to do that. Why am I doing it? Yeah, don't need to clean that up. All right, that looks pretty good for a start. All right, we're going to have to trim it some, but I have to go do the pins. And that needs a little cleanup, too. And I could put these in my vise and do that. I put the moxin vise away. I don't have a big enough workbench to have the moxin vise out. And so let's take a look up close. Get them focused. Get it in there. So you can see there's some schmutz in the corner there. I'll have to clean that up. I'll probably do that off camera, but you get the idea. And I think these so far look pretty sharp. And as I say, using hardwood, this is maple, using hardwood, actually a little easier to get really sharp, clean cuts than it is with the softwoods. So I don't know, if you're practicing and you're not doing so great, like me, oh my God, these are terrible. No, they're actually okay. They're going to be fine. They're just, these are not perpendicular. I can feel that. So I'm going to have to go trim that up. These look okay. And I don't have good depth reception, so that angle looks way different than that angle to me. What do you guys think? Uh, eh, it looks okay on camera. Doesn't look as good in person. That's probably my goofy ass eyeballs. All right. So that's a start. We'll get around to pins in a minute. I'm back. vibrating real bad because it's kind of high up in the vise. Put it down a little more. Okay, that feels pretty good. Over here. Now, 
I did a test video where I compared this saw, which is a Veritas fine tooth one to my others, and I didn't like it very much. But in this maple, it's half inch maple, I'm really kind of liking it. I think it feels pretty good. So, go figure. All right, can you still see? You can't see. There we go. We'll move it down a little bit. Get it in. There we go. Some more cuts. Got a couple nicks in the front edge of my thing here. Give it a little street cred. Make it look like I've used it more than twice. I think this one's going to be a little trimming. Yeah, so that's a difference I mentioned earlier. The, the difference in working with hardwoods and softwoods is I would truly say that uh, in this harder wood, that fine tooth saw feels much better to me. Okay, let's go around to this end. And one side is as good as any. There's my little square. Here it is. What do I do with my pencil? Ah, oh, my kingdom for a pencil. There it is. Okay, so let's bring it down. Right there, bring it down. Right there, further over, bring it down. around this way and bring it down. Oh, those all look better than the ones I did before, except that last one. Okay, now, some of them look right. Anyway, we're going to get rid of this, 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 this. Need some notes, so I can't get it right without the notes. All right, same thing we had before. Okay, it's a little vibey. Put it farther down in the vise. Can you still see? Yeah, you can still see. Okay. Oh, it's focused. <laughs> Do you hear that? This saw is cutting very nicely in this maple. Just for comparisons, let's get my personally tuned Spear and Jackson Krugerized saw. Let's go this way a little bit. All right, I just really screwed that cut up. So that wasn't a good example. It was a terrible example. Maybe I'll let it forward. So this is 13 teeth per inch, and this is 20. 13, and 20 almost is like um, using a lower gear in your car. Let's see, did I get low enough on that side? I think it did. Now oh, this came out pretty good. So now we do some chiseling. So I'm going to pull the moxin vise out of here again. Okay, you can all see my amazing skill level. I put the moxin vise away, forgetting that I've got to cut these out still. So can we see what I'm doing? Let's put them on a regular vise. i got to get them lower. That is too flexible. I need to get the moxin vise back out. So don't be shy. Okay. That to me is rocking right here. That's what I feel like. I'm going to put on more powerful reading glasses here. These are not cutting it. Getting old is the worst. I do not recommend that at all. Okay. These have got some power. So I have a glass in my shop. I have a bunch of safety glasses with uh, the, the bifocal reading lenses. And I mark them. Two stripes is a... Two and a half power. Oops, one stripe is a 
think of two power and no stripes is a one and a half. And it's depending on how far away I'm working. I change glasses because I find them somewhat uncomfortable to have a high power lens. Let's see. Oh, getting closer. That's really tight. Oh, yeah. Hmm. This thing's kind of ugly, so I'm going to... Move that to it. Come on out of there. There you go. Okay, still really tight. I'm still feeling like it's really tight right there. Yep, it's... Definitely, but let me see. Does that look straight up and down? Let's cheat a little. Let's cheat a little. I think that'll fit in there. No. Okay, so this is not perfect. Can you see, can you see that? Am I showing it to you? Oh, I gotta get up where I can see the back of my phone. Okay, let me show this to you. See if you can see it. Okay. See that dark spot right there? Okay, when I was putting that down here and mashing it, you were watching that, that's the uh, the bruising. And if you look at this, you can see, I'm looking at it myself, I'm not showing it to you. Come on, why aren't you focusing? Come on, camera. There we go. Got to get over here on the left. If you look at it, this isn't very flat. So I'm going to trim on that a little bit to get it prettier. Let's see where the bruising go, right there. So I'm going to try take just a little bit off of there. I'm going to put it over here. It's still too tight. Let's see if I can figure out where. I can see some bruising right there. Yeah, and right there. Okay, so we're here. I don't know what I need. As I make these videos, you guys may notice. I sort of, well, that's really tight. I shouldn't be doing that. I sort of have a chisel for every occasion, or a hammer for every occasion, a chisel. I don't know the difference between a chisel and a hammer, but if I did, I'd have one for every occasion. Okay, that is too tight. i tell you what, I think it's going to come out pretty nice if I figure out how to get it out of here. Boy. Okay. It's kind of tight everywhere, so that's not good. So let's see. Bring it down here. I think I see some spots that need a little. That's about definitely needs cleaning up. Some of this work is a lot easier to do. Don't stab yourself. Just about to do it twice. Okay, let's try this. I still feel like it's right where it just was. Now I feel like it's over here. I think it's right there.
I mean, we're getting there. Mm, it's not going to be terrible. Okay, I'm having a little trouble just deciding. Mm -hmm. I still feel like it's. I still feel like it's right here. Right, let me just take a huge hunk of wood off of there. That may not be good. Well, I gotta tell you, all right, the alignment's not perfect. Let's take a close-up look. Come here, America. All right. Oh, all right. Okay, see, we can't really see close-up. Let me bring the camera in. Go for some shaky handwork. Now those look kind of big on camera. They look much better in person with my terrible vision. Um, a little presbyopia goes a long way. Here we go. Why is it? Why is my? There we go. So not too bad. These will clean up pretty good. I got a little cleanup to do down there. These are actually, for me, yeah, it's a half-decent joint. A little out of alignment here. Whoopsie. Okay. Not bad. Let's set up to the other side. All right. I put the moxin way, mox advice away a little soon. So I'm going to do this in my regular vice. Yeah, which holds it a little more firmly. I'm not. Oh, oh got really low there. Got root. Oh, I'm not happy about that. We'll see how it comes out. Okay. We had that a little tight. See what I did was I stuck a piece of wood the same width. Because this vise will rack quite a bit. It'll rack quite a bit, and so that prevents it from closing too tight at this end and not holding this end. It's another woodworking tool that looked good on the internet, but... I'm not sure it's the right one for me. I think there's enough wood there to survive. Well, there's a lot of giant gaps. Or I'll get some more wood. <laughs> Come on now. I had it going so good. Just in case anybody's wondering, these are Pegas uh, blades. And even though I may not be the smoothest, those have been the nicest ones I've ever found for using. Okay, now I saw something I wanted to fix before I take it out of the vise, which is Oh, uh, make it a little deep there. All right, well, well, yeah. Well, they're not all going to be perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's way off anyway. All right, let's get it right. There we go. Yeah. All right. You guys are just sitting there shaking your heads, aren't you? You're like, oh, my God. Let him have a sharp instrument. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Too late now. All right, let's go clean the bottoms out and then we'll fit it. Ah, okay. All 
Okay, nice, fairly sharp chisel. It could be sharper, but it'll work. Eh, not the prettiest work I've ever done, but it'll work. Now, in case anybody's wondering, this mallet, that is hickory. And I made that myself on my lathe, which is a very easy project to do. You just got to turn a mallet shape. Uh, it's just glued up, three-quarter inch. And I made the handle... Because my imagination thought that this tapered handle would be nice, and the traditional handle would have more of a, a symmetrical curve to it. I made another one, which I gave away, and I'll tell you, that more symmetrical curve, the more traditional, it's, uh, it's better. This is a, just a little, doesn't really fit that hollow of your palm. It works fine, but that more sw swell is, is better. So I should have done it that way. There's a lesson for you. Although... When it comes to tapping chisels, it works just fine. Of course, realistically, so would an old tree branch. You know, I mean, it's, it's just a club for clubbing chisels. It's not, you know, it's not really critical. Yes, my uh, Let's see if that looks good. Oh, that is not. Let's get the wood under there. There we go. Still not the flattest piece. This drawer may come out terrible. We'll find out. It's late at night. I'm not going to argue at this point. Oh, wrong mallet. That's also a hickory mallet. I made with the, you know, the other way. Uh, one thing I found is hickory splits are real easy, so you don't want to hit. There's some split off the top. You don't want to hit anything metal with it. I mean, this will work round, but anything with a sharp edge, and your mallet's going to remember you, you will not get a Christmas card from it. You'll get a little tear out there, and you know, part of that's just normal. Part of that is probably that this chisel isn't super sharp. It's pretty sharp, but it's not, it's not going to impress the, the internet, you know, all the sharpening nuts. And I should go sharpen it, but it's like after dark, and I just don't feel like it. You know, Yeah, it took, a, took, a, took kind of a big bite that time, so I'll get some, some more tear out. Go use my other chisel, it's a little sharper. Oh, yeah, there's tear out. Thing is, it's not visible. This is just a drawer in a desk, so the strength isn't going to be an issue at all. It's only going to be open when I think, where did I put that? And of course, I don't know where I put it. It won't be in the desk drawer anyway, because that would be. That's pretty akin to being organized, so it's not likely to happen. Oh yeah, that's much sharper. Okay, so there's a lesson. You've probably never heard that one before. There's a, a secret tip is sharper tools make the work easier. <laughs> and generally better results. I have had a situation where it didn't, but those situations are very rare. Now, he worked in a cabinet shop when I was a kid, 
high school job, you know. And we did a lot of edge banding. You know, I had a big old edge banding machine, and I edge banded a lot of plywood. And when you trim the edge banding off, I used to use a dull pocket knife. And I had sharpened it, and it was a lot harder to use. It would snag the wood and tear it even, which I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it really worked better once it got a little dull. That's the only time I've ever said that a dull tool was better. Um, doing edge banding, which I know that sounds weird. You probably don't believe me, but, you know, I was also 16 and not the highly skilled craftsman you see today. So, you know. That, you know, does anybody use edge banding anymore? You know, the iron, I saw some at Lowe's today. I was really surprised that it was so easily found. We used a ton of it back in the 80s. And if you guys remember the 1980s, but everything was made of red oak with a big bullnose corner on it. Everything was awful. I used to really hate red oak. You know, because I cut a lot of it. And it's not easy to work with. I did a lot of work on it with a dull router bit. Because my boss wasn't forking out for a new router bit. All right, let's move around. Ack. All right, so we're looking at the other one. I did a quick job of trimming out the pins, and now we're going to see that one right off. That's basically my first try. Not too bad. Let's see where it feels tight. Uh, still feels, I think it's... Yeah, it feels tight in here. There's some distinct bruising there, I think. There's some bruising there. Let's see, if there's bruising right there, it's here. I'm going to take some off. Oh, yeah, I see some bruising there. Here. That seems okay. That's tight. It's tight here. Yeah, it's a little breathing. Just can't do it sitting down. Get up. Okay, so that sounds, I'm going to tap on that middle one, it's really hard, so let's see. Okay, over here, we got bruising, so let's... So I know. Now I've screwed that around so much, I'm not sure where it goes. There we go. Hmm. 
I like this. Yeah, there's some new bruising over here. Interesting. I think this side will be a little tight. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stop that. There we go. What kind of mess I just made. <laughs> uh, where is it sticking? It's definitely not there. I think it's right here. Yeah. Way too tight. I'll figure it out where. Yeah, right there, I think, a little bit. Um, let's see. We'll do some more shaky hand work. Looks pretty good from here. Hmm. Okay, so you can see there's a little gap there. That'll hide. That'll hide up okay. That isn't pretty at all. <laughs> Needs a little where there's a gap there. Okay, so not perfect. Not perfect. But I have not done a lot of dovetailing. I'm trying to get better at it. You can see here, this is a little deep, too. See, so my alignment wasn't all that great to start with. I don't know if this drawer is going to be very, very square. We'll find out. All right, well, that's enough for tonight. I'm going to take a break, and we'll come back later and do some more drawer. Here we are with the completed drawer back on the desk. Let's take a quick look. So I finished the inside with a, a single coat of uh, wipe-on poly. The outside is finished with the same varathene as the desk. Trying to make it match. I think I did a pretty good job. A little brass hardware. Let's take a look, see how the, the joints came out. Have the finished joint cleaned up pretty good, I'd say. Let's take a look at the other side. And pretty good. Little gap here at the top. I didn't do anything with that. But I think overall this drawer came out pretty good. It's a big drawer. Let's take a... There it is. Well, I think it looks okay. Came out pretty good. Now, since no one's ever going to look in this drawer again, I suppose I just did dovetails for my own entertainment. Because, let's face it, it's a desk drawer. Who looks at them? Anyway, if you stuck with me through the whole video... Thank you. If you fast forwarded, good idea. Uh, look forward to my next project. We'll catch you later.